Going carnivore in Thailand, day number 30, why one month results on a carnivore diet. I'm happy with my results. Very happy. Could they be better? Possibly. Yes, I know that they always can be better. Life can always be better and life can always be worse. But before I just jump in and tell you exactly how much weight I lost, tell you exactly how many inches I lost in various places on my body. You've seen the thumbnail. The thumbnail on the left, the image on the left of my face is the way it looked when I started. The image on the right is the way it looks on day 30. The image isn't doctored in any way. Now it does look like I'm a little more tan. And to be honest, I am. Because I get out in the pool almost daily unless something stops me like injury. And I spend enough time in the pool not to burn but I get enough sun, which helps my vitamin D. Everybody says sun helps your vitamin D. So I try to get enough sun that I get a little bit of color on my skin without the risk of melanoma and everything. Maybe 30 minutes of sun and then I cover up or try to stay in the shade as I exercise in the pool. Now... Why am I doing this channel? It's for information. It's about sharing information. It's about reading the comments that I get back. Thank you very much for all of your comments. I try to read every one of them. Some of them I wholeheartedly 100% currently support what they're saying some of them I don't now this is a world of misinformation but the one thing I think I've learned in 30 days yeah you know, doing a carnivore lifestyle the one thing I think I've learned is that carnivore is not for everybody And those who've had success on carnivore need to keep in mind that we are adaptive human beings. Now, I personally, I don't know who my parents are. I was adopted. I had wonderful adoptive parents. Wonderful. But I don't know if I was... Middle Eastern, probably not. European, maybe. Where does my lineage, where does my line of, of bloodline come from? But I've come to a conclusion reading some people's comments and, and actually knowing some people who are vegan and go by a vegetarian lifestyle that look like they're healthy. They're not overweight. They look like they're in great shape. They're not necessarily young, but they're doing it totally on a vegetarian basis. And it's clear that their body tolerates that just fine. They're, they're, they eat what they eat and their body seems to say, I'm not unhappy with it. My blood glucose is, is good on a vegetarian diet. Now, I also believe that that's not me. I'm not in that camp. We're just talking here as one-to-one. -one. I've done that my whole life and it just made me grossly overweight. 
and I saw some success here in the first 30 days. But I'd like to expand this channel a little further and I'd like to turn it into having a few podcast style videos where myself and one or two other people can have discussions and I can post them. Various viewpoints can be heard. I've already saw comments from individuals I'd like to ask if they would like to be interviewed. Some have very unique stories. No, None of you out there, I'm sure, read all the comments on all these videos I'm posting up. I'm posting a new video, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, every single day. That is a lot of work. These videos don't come easy, especially this video here. Now, let's get to a little bit of the results. When I started carnivore, I weighed 175 kilograms, which is 385.8 pounds. Let's just call it 386. 385.8. 30 days ago. And let's just go down to the weight loss. On day 30, I woke up, brushed my teeth, went in, weighed in like I did every other day, took pictures, I got the receipts. I was at 158.4 kilograms, which is 349.2 pounds. That's a loss of 16.6 kilograms and 36.6 pounds. I'm not going to get that every month. Although there are some people out there on carnivore diets who've lost over 200 pounds in a year. Uh, most of them who've done that are much younger than me, which means their body probably heals itself quicker. And why do I say heal? Because I think my body's sick. I've been feeding it crap it can't eat. That is no good. So it has to heal. And... I don't think I'm going to heal at a rate that a 35-year-old or 45-year-old is going to heal at. But for the first month, 36.6 pounds was very happy. Now, I went through a long period as I show you a little video overlay of accelerated fashion of the scale readings, I went through a long period where it would just be no change or minus two-tenths of a kilogram or minus one-tenth of a kilogram. And then all of a sudden it would, it would be minus eight-tenths of a kilogram after days of zero, zero, zero change. But I think that, that initial shock to your system goes a long way. Now, I've been sharing with you every day sort of what I've been eating. And I've been getting a lot of comments on it. But I know that I'm losing more inches and functionality is being gained than I am pounds. So let's get to the inches. Okay? When I started, Noi put measuring tape around my chest right through here. And it measured 65 inches. Day 30, she did it again. And she her smile was, wow. It measured 60 inches. Six zero. That's five inches off my chest right through here. 
And of course, that goes under my arms. So that means I've got more mobility downward in my arms and less weight underneath my arms against my body. Big difference. Now let's go down to the waist. When I started this, she measured, and, and to be honest, she measured actually on day five. Because when I started this, there was enough to craziness going on. Uh, you know, I didn't start this to do a YouTube channel and document everything. It was about five days in when I started everything. So five days in, my waist measured, which she measures it right around my belly button, basically. My waist measured 67 inches. Now, you're not going to find that belt at your local clothing store in too many places unless you go to the big boy shop 67 inches but today 30 days later 4 inches less 63 inches hallelujah that's a big that's a big plus big plus 4 inches now my biceps and shoulders my biceps are 20 my shoulder was 25. There wasn't any real, real change where she measured it that way. And my thigh, around my thigh, she measured was 26 inch circumference. The one thing she did measure, though, was my neck for a collar size for a shirt, by the way. I, should, here I'm, I feel so casual with you guys. I didn't even button the top, the upper button. My bad. Let me apologize in advance for that faux pas. But my neck when I started this was 23 inches. Now that makes it a little hard to buy shirts unless you have them custom made. If you wanted to wear a tie, which, by the way, they won't even bury me in a tie. So I don't have that problem. But my neck did go down 1 inch to 22 now, there is nothing wrong with that kind of data. My blood glucose level in December, we measured it and it was 360 for my blood glucose level, where they prick your finger and they put it on the meter and check it out. We just tested it, 109. Holy shit, that's better. My blood pressure. Just three weeks ago, I went to the hospital to get a checkup because I'm trying to get emergency hospitalization coverage here in Thailand. Just for like a big emergency, not for anything small. And they ran a whole blood panel and everything on me. And my A1C was way up there. They said it was way too high, like an 8. That was like three weeks ago from day 30. So we just started. And they tested my blood pressure like three times. They even tested it after all the other tests again to see if it would get lower. And it was always around 152, 155 over... You know, 90, something like that. Not so good. But just the other day, we checked my blood or my blood pressure, and it was actually around the 129 level. 129 over 80, 129 over 73. I'd really like to, uh, I'm looking for my phone. Oh, here. Let me check real quick on my phone because I keep these notes. On day, the last time I checked my blood pressure was uh, day 22 of carnivore. 
123 over 69. And my blood sugar was 109. On, on day six, my blood sugar was 360. So my blood pressure dropping to 123 over 69. That can't be an accident. It has to be because of this diet. Now, on day 30, what did I have? Uh, for breakfast, I think I had virtually... I don't think I had any... Oh, I had chicken for breakfast. Grilled chicken. And for dinner, I believe I had liver. Delicious liver. It's fantastic. But what I'd like to do is on this 30 days to remind people that we live in a world of misinformation, disinformation, and malinformation. And I say malinformation because that's usually when the government's involved. And I think our government combined with major food manufacturers going all the way back to when K-rations were developed in World War II. And when all these studies are funded by the major agricultural and food organizations. I don't know if I can find this online, but I saw a chart on one of the videos I was watching where a, a very knowledgeable, very famous individual whose name I can't remember was expounding the virtues of a plant-based diet. And a chart was put up. Who are the major contributors commercially to the American Heart Association? Who contributes the most? ConAgra. Kellogg's. All these companies that make processed foods, they contribute to the American Heart Association to do studies, but these studies are not geared to truly give you the truth. They're geared because... They want you to know that saturated fats are bad for you. Too much protein's bad for you. You need a low fat, low, low protein, high carbohydrate diet. Cheerios. Breakfast of champions. Wheaties. Oh, they put athletes on the Wheaties box. Well, I wonder how many of those decathlon a athletes really eat Wheaties. Do you really think that Michael Phelps winning all those gold medals as an Olympic swimmer had Wheaties every morning and ate crap? I met him once, by the way. I played poker with him. And he was wearing flip-flops. Just a local story. And I'm telling you what. That mother had feet that were this big. And his toes were so long. Because he's wearing flip-flops. He's sitting right next to me. We're playing poker in Vegas at one of the big WSOP tournaments. 
And I always look for people speak as tells. People people look at people's hands and faces to get tells whether they have a good hand. I look at their feet. Their feet always tell you if they're they're really playing well. Now I played professional poker for a long time. But if you're watching somebody play poker and they're sitting at a table and they move one foot forward like they're getting ready to run. That's because they got a good hand. They're ready to play. They're ready to get it. They're ready to get on with the program. So when they sit there, they get their feet straight apart. But then they get, they look down, they got two kings, and all of a sudden one of their foot moves forward. The other one moves a little backwards like they're getting in a stance to start running. That's a big tell. So while I was looking down, I looked. This guy's got toes this long. And his feet, they were huge. I said, well, no wonder he wins all these swimming competitions. It's like he was born with swim fins. I mean, his feet looked like a Navy SEAL after the SEAL put on his swim fins. for the. For the I mean, no wonder he wins. Anyway, but I he's got he had body that looked like it was chiseled out of stone. I doubt if he was eating Wheaties. Seriously. I think he was eating nutrient dense food, which is probably a lot of meat and protein. But I don't know for sure. But I'd like to start a podcast where I could interview people. Not just the famous people like the Dr. Berries and stuff like that who probably don't even have time to talk to me. But the everyday people who have the same problems that other everyday people have. But they're out there and they've been on carnivore for a year and a half and it didn't work out for them and they quit. Or they've been on carnivore for six months and they've lost a ton of weight they feel great and they're going for it. Or they're on a plant-based diet because they couldn't handle carnivore. I don't care, but there's too much misinformation out there in this world today. So I'm doing this not only to document my own successes, but really to... Let's get good information out there. And I think that we can help each other. So if you haven't li liked this video yet, please like it. I I'm, I'm surprised how few views I actually get. And they say when people like a video, then, you know, YouTube will start showing it to other people who are interested in that subject matter, like being a carnivore. But there's one thing more I want to talk to you about. For some reason, because of the information, you know, the, the UN and the World Economic Forum, Forum and the Council on Foreign Relations, they came up with this idea that cows have methane gas and that cows fart and it's causing global warming. So if you... If anybody gets out there in the, in the real world and they say, I'm a vegan. I don't eat animals. Nobody says shit to them. I mean, it, it's politically correct. We got plant-based diet. I eat hamburgers, but they're made out of soy. You know, plant-based. Nobody says anything to these people. If you say you eat cows, you are responsible for global warming. Now, let me ask you this. The largest owner of commercial farms and farmland in the United States is Bill Gates, the multi-billionaire founder of Microsoft, Bill Gates is buying farms. And he's a member of the World Economic Forum. 
And of course, he's going to benefit from agricultural products, plant products. He's not buying cattle ranches, he's buying farms. And the new world order wants everybody to stop eating meat because it's causing global warming and climate change. You know, they don't call it global warming anymore. They don't call it global warming, they call it climate change. You know why? Because all of a sudden they have this downturn in temperature where Texas was out without power for four days and it was so cold the, the wind turbines froze up from their ESG agenda. So calling it global warming, that didn't make sense anymore. So everything's climate change. That way, if it goes up or down, either way, they win. Climate change. It's got to be climate change. You know, today it was hot and sunny. Tomorrow, if it rains, we got climate change. Misinformation, disinformation, and malinformation. I'd like to put into a little bit of it, or at least try to minimize it. So, I'm happy to be doing this. I want to thank you all for every bit of support that you give me and well wishes. Sometimes it's not so easy. I don't, I'm not a real big football fan. I only watch the Super Bowl. That's about it. I only do that because it's it. sort of interesting for the last game. But, you know, I do watch motorsports. And it's sort of pathetic of the amount of money that is being spent on advertising crap foods. Today, you know, the Daytona 500, Wendy's is down there giving away Wendy's biggie bags. Like, you ain't getting enough crap from them. An upgrade to a biggie fry. And a biggie Coca-Cola with all that sugar. I mean, this sugar habit's hard for me to kick. You know, and, and we're seeing all this tons of money spent on advertising the crappy food. You know what I didn't see? I didn't see anybody down there advertising ribeyes on the side of their car. The only one I saw was Smithfield. And, you know, they're a little big on the bacon. But that's offset by the watermelon man publicizing watermelons. You know, and uh, be interesting to know the Grand Marshal of the Daytona 500 was Dwayne The Rock Johnson. And that guy's built like uh, the Greek god David. Was David a Greek god or a Roman guy? I don't know which, but he had a good body. And I wonder, does the Rock eat a bunch of junk food? Is he eating French fries? Does he eat tons of salad? Now I know he works out and everything, but I can't imagine his his uh, diet is bad. But that's the thing: carnivore is not for everybody. It may be for me. It may be for you. But I got a friend that I'd like to interview that I know has been vegan for a very long time and he looks very healthy. And it's... He travels all over the world. And it looks like he's fine. 
he don't have an ounce of fat on it. But you know, I think there are some people who could eat dirt and not gain weight and not die. It, I think some people's bodies are fine-tuned to eat other stuff than what my body can handle. So, this is actually day 31 I'm making this because doing the 30-day video, I had to gather a lot more stuff together, more images. A lot of what you're seeing probably or hearing, you're looking at other things besides me. Uh, I'm trying to do these a little simpler. I know this one's went on for way too long. It's been like 30 minute video array, but it is once every 30 days. So, what do you think? Please like and share. It's hard to build a subscriber. You know, 90% of the people who do watch this aren't subscribed. Uh, and I, I do want to thank you because, believe it or not, my channel in this first 30 days holy cow thank you very much 281 people have subscribed in 30 days from nothing I mean just flat new channel 281 people thank you very much uh, who knows maybe someday i'll get a channel with enough people on it to sell to sell some cool shirts that i make up with hannonisms on it like here's my one of my quips of wisdom experience is what you get when you don't get what you want that's right experience is what you get when you don't get what you want. Like if you ever hire a roofer and you pay them a little bit in advance and then they don't show up to do the job, then you got some experience. Just saying. That's all folks.